Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it more to come. And we're going to take a look at gold, silver, oil, the Bloomberg Commodity Index, and see what's going on with these. They've been trending. I still think they're in very nice, strong trends to the upside. We'll take a look. Let's start off here with the indices, the major indices first. The Dow Industrials up 561 points here this last week. So the real question is, is the corrective action in here over the last couple, several months, is that over with or uh, do we have more to come? So when we take a look at the S&P 500, it's up 33 points. It continues to push. Now it's up three weeks in a row. And we kind of, you know, ran out of steam a little bit over here on the NASDAQ 100 after that big move that we had the, the prior week. It was up 41 points this last week. Now, all of these indices are showing major divergence on several of the indicator fronts. Now, you still got to wait for price action to roll over and tell you that it's getting ready to break down for breakdown. But even though these are in strong uptrends, I still think, as I mentioned last week, uh, I said the time, you know, I called it near term risk. Well, OK, we've had four trading days since then. I'm not going to say that I, th I throw that out because I still think this market is ready for a rest and needs a rest, a little more corrective activity before we take another major leg up. Now, when I take a look at the industrials versus the transports, transports, again, as I've mentioned before, just have not confirmed this move. If you look over here from July of last year, you see where my cursor is over here in the left window. Well, look where the cursor is in the transports, and it's in the same place time-wise. So here's where it is in the Dow Industrials. Here's where it is in the Dow Transports. And we just haven't confirmed. I mean, we've done this while the Industrials have done this. So it's not a pretty picture. The market's not in sync right now. All right, let's go back and take a look at uh, the Bloomberg Commodity Index. This is all the data I've got on the Bloomberg Commodity Index. You can see this big long-term trend down from uh, 2008 all the way down into here to the low in 2020. You remember when the gold, when the oil futures went negative? I mean, it just you know like blew everybody's mind. Well, then all of a sudden, this long-term trend, 12-year trend, gets smashed to the upside in this big move that we had here in the commodities. And if we zoom in and say, OK, what's going on since then? We've had this little corrective channel and we broke out of that corrective channel here at the end of March, right in here. OK, and that's when I was talking about at the beginning of April. I had a video and said we were talking about, you know, commodity breakout and that's what it looked like. But what did it do? It hit a wall up here at the top of this triangle. So I think we had a triangle for a corrective wave four in here. And uh, and so now, you know, we've struggled to get through that resistance level. We've pulled back for several weeks, one, two, three, and then we we're up a little bit the prior week. And then we pulled back down this last week. So, you know, based on where we are, RSI, et cetera, you know, we're looking to see, can we get our feet underneath us and then start to push and close above this level on the Bloomberg Commodity Index? So when I look at that, I say, well, OK, well, what's happening with gold? Let's, I'm going to go over here to the moving average view. and Let's take a look at gold, GLD. That's a daily. Here's the weekly. Now we got, you know, we got hurt on Friday, down $3.38 on GLD. Now 95 cents on the week doesn't look so so bad when you look at it on a weekly basis. And over here, the thing I mentioned to my members on Thursday night was, you know, this little two-day sequence looked very much like this two-day sequence that happened right here. I just didn't quite trust it. And then what happens on Friday? So I'm not quite sure that this little corrective pattern is over yet. I'm looking for a fourth wave in here. I'm talking about the minor fourth wave because I think we are in a third intermediate wave up and I'm talking about a third of a fifth, you know, major wave in here. We've broken above this major resistance level 
and we've broken out of this base channel here uh, on the uh, Elliott Wave pattern. We've pulled back to the top of that channel and I'm really looking for this to kind of regroup and then resume the push to the upside. Now when I look at silver, I think silver is doing something similar, but I think it's actually acting a little bit stronger. Now this is a weekly view. You can see these are basically the ranges for 2023, the high and low in 2022, the high and low in 2021. Okay, and here's where we're sitting. We broke above that, pulled back. Now, let me look at the, uh, the daily here on SLV. It pulled back just like gold did on you know, $1.02 on, on Friday. So similar kind of move, a little two-day sequence, pull back, a little two-day sequence, and we pull back. So now we're going to regroup, break out of this. That's what I'm watching for. Because when I look at the, uh, the longer term picture, I've got this in a primary wave three to the upside and an intermediate wave three. This should become and continue to be very, very strong if this is indeed a third of a third. OK, and from an LA wave standpoint, that's usually the very strongest wave structure. OK, in movement. All right. So that's where we sit with SLV. Um, that's the picture we've got. This has been pretty choppy and pretty messy over here on a daily basis. OK, now the last thing I want to take a look at is USO. OK, I cut away all the noise, all the moving averages, everything else. Here's the price action weekly on United States oil fund. OK, uh, this stays pretty nicely in sync with what's happening with the West Texas Intermediate Futures. You can see uh, West Texas closed the futures at $80.65 on Friday. So what's really a couple of things. We never got a huge pullback after this big rally. We've just basically been going sideways. And yes, you know, from over the last two years, you know, we're, we're actually down. But boy, this pattern right here really caught my eye. When you carve away all the noise, all of a sudden, this looks like a beautiful ascending triangle. You know, kind of your classic, you know, chart pattern pattern. Um, and it just, it you know, but <laughs> what's the key in here? You got to see it close above this top horizontal line and break out. Now, if it comes down and does the opposite and breaks this trend line down, then all of a sudden this this picture becomes a whole lot more negative real quick. But this is pretty intriguing. So keep your eye on that, because if it closes above this, oil could really take off and run. And then, of course, we'll be zooming in on a whole bunch of the oil stocks and XLE, et cetera. OK, that's it for this weekend. We'll see what uh, what the coming week brings. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this YouTube channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information on a regular basis, head on over to joehenches.net. All right, everyone, have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.